wiggle here. Uh, it's Wednesday after the 4th of July, whatever day that is. See that hose right there? We drained the 3,000 gallon tank, about a third of it, so we got about 1,000 gallons of water last night that dripped through that hose. I shut the hose off because I'm filling up the cow water. Anyway, this is uh, the hydrant, totally on uh, density feed. Just the water pushing down here. We got about 1,000 gallons of water in this garden. Can't even see it. It's down in the, underneath that wood chips. So um, last time it rained, well, I was trying to capture the water right here to pull it out of that ditch and into the garden. But what happened is it blew out right there. My dam blew out and my water went on down the hill. So we're going to fill in this part here and try to hold the water back into the garden again. I'm also trying to choke out the poison ivy with a piece of cardboard and a piece of carpet. This poison ivy, I don't want it getting in the garden. You can just see it all through that ditch. So I'm going to try to steal that water, push it into the garden here. And here's the cucumbers, sunflowers, sweet potatoes, and Johnson grass. But I checked the water. It's definitely moist underneath that uh, wood chip. I'm just going to keep pouring a thousand gallons. That's, I'm guessing, what it'll dump a day, maybe 1,500 gallons a day on this uphill portion and just see how it goes with the garden. So we're going to move this dirt from where I scraped that, all the grass out of that garden when I put it in and I'm going to just dump it over here. Hopefully we'll see how it holds up to the next rain because I have not been getting the moisture in the garden that I really wanted. Was I recording? Ah, I wasn't recording. Oh well. So I'm out working on the pasture. Just wanted to comment on the different kind of plants and their different strategies. Spiny amaranth likes a little bit of moisture and a little bit of fertility but it definitely likes disturbed ground so it really will come in and take over. I've chopped most of it over there but it was all bare ground from when I was putting in these pipes and stuff. I had uh, dirt piles there. So I scraped it, disturbed it and that spiny amaranth kicked in real quick. Just like on top of that mound, it's all spiny amaranth mo or mostly where I scraped for the road bed left that loose dirt there and it just come in and take over its idea is what I think its intended purpose design is or one of them is to stabilize ground see what happens is it'll come in and pop up real fast drop a lot of seeds it just it goes to seed very rapidly and it stabilizes loose dirt and it gets the grazers off it's like barbed wire so the grazers can't get in there and, and tear up the soil anymore so it's, it's actually trying to fix things and when we give it the environment it needs to thrive, it becomes a weed. Um, another plant is that local weed, very poisonous. Nothing, nothing touches it. So it comes in, grows very rapidly, it's poisonous to everything, drops a lot of seeds, it keeps going that way. Perillo mint, poisonous to grazing animals. They don't touch it. That's some kind of a Japanese green they sell. It's expensive, I forget, gobo or something, I don't know. Anyway, it grows wild here. It's the same thing. People paying all this money for this fancy Asian cuisine and you can just go out and get it out of the pasture. But it, that's poisonous and as a mint it's very seedy. But it definitely, as you can see, likes rich soil. So that local weed likes rich soil as does that pearl mint. It's not even trying to grow down here. Then you got the uh, pokeweed which is similar to that. Also highly poisonous, very rapid growing deep root. Just grows really quickly. Then right there on the edge of that fertility where the ground was not disturbed but it's f fertile and it gets a decent amount of moisture you get that um, chicory growing. It's deep rooted, it's tough, st stalky and the animals will eat the top but they don't eat the bottom. So uh, wild carrot I noticed the animals don't prefer that so they well, Queen Anne's lace. So, so anyway I just wanted to show you some of the various. Uh, there's the ragweed they all eat the top and they don't eat the bottom too stemmy. So it kind of just hangs on. Again, very seedy. So just some of the Virginia Zone 7 weeds. You can see all out there. The, uh, the spiny amaranth everywhere. So I just chop it with a sickle or a scythe. I weed eat it if it's not too thick. But it's pretty thick so I'm just going to chop it. So that's it for now. I will check in later on this pump. I mean on this tank. Fill you in on that project. But it is. Uh, that's it trickle over there that's coming out of this tank just with a, a valve open there's no pump ring or anything so it doesn't that's fairly 
far uphill it doesn't have a lot of pressure, but when I open that other spigot it gets pretty good pressure. I'll fill you in later as I work on this solar generator. I'm going to make a portable solar generator to run that. Uh, let's do it now. Got all this stuff in the way so the cows don't get it. So that pump right there, 24 volt, 8 amp pump. So I'm going to be uh, wiring that up to a solar panel. But I didn't really have any good location for it just because of where we're at behind this giant oak and the driveway and not a lot of good places to put it. So I'm going to put it on a cart and wheel it around. Use the batteries to hold the cart down for the full size uh, 320 watt solar panel. And then it'll also be a charging station. Is this, is, I'm working on making this a uh, tiny home parking, RV parking, van life parking. That's what this, this one acre lot's going to be here. So I'm going to uh, put that um, solar generator out there to make it available for people to charge batteries, cell phones, you know, whatever they, flashlights or whatever it is they need to do. Cal finally gets smart and finds the block of salt and the hay bale. Finally gets smart. So I'm going to be putting that panel right there. It's a tree. I'm going to be making that, that panel into a solar. Probably going to use an old dolly and get my two batteries get it all going you can hear the, the pump so here's my inlet just a small filter that I can take off from anything that's coming out of the line from the well then I got this better swirl filter that um, you can drain that's coming out of the bottom of the tank before it goes into the pump that pump doesn't want any trash in it so if that's just an on-demand pressure pump with a built-in pressure switch I don't want to give you a brand name hopefully you didn't see it Anyway, I'll fill you in later. Uh, one other tip I had when you're uh, up here, there's a bulkhead fitting and then I put a float valve inside. It's a one piece plastic float valve, self-contained. Anyway, I used a glue fitting on the inside there and that glue fitting popped off and dropped my uh, shutoff valve all the way to the bottom of this tank. So I fished it out of there. My tip is to put a piece of string on that valve and if, you, if it pops off for any reason, it's going to be floating right there on that string. You can just pull it right up. That way you don't have to spend all the time trying to fish it out of the bottom. So, yeah, I'll keep you updated. The tank is filling, but it's all just natural pressure. It's just atmospheric pressure. So, anyway, I'll fill you in more later.